This video focuses on how to create custom components in VapePsych. Users can create component models and insert them into the software. There are example files located in the VapePsych download package. A general component example and a heat exchanger component example. Components must be developed using Microsoft's Visual Studio.NET framework. To start, open Visual Studio and create a new project. Choose the class library .NET standard option. Make sure it is one that says .dll in parentheses. Name your component. I'm going to call it custom component. Select the location to save this file and create your project. In order to access the necessary methods to create a custom component, we have to add a few references to this project. To do so, right-click on References under the Solution Explorer panel and click on Add Reference. Alternatively, go up to the Project tab and click on Add Reference. On the left side, go to the Browse tab if you are not already on it. At the bottom, select Browse in your RavePsych folder. The two DLL files we need are called VapePsych Standard and umdceee.common. Make sure they are checked on the side and click OK. To check that this was successfully done, these two references should show up in the Solution Explorer panel under References. Now on the public class class one line, we are going to reference the necessary interface with all the helper methods for a custom component. Type a colon and then type in umd -E -E standard dot i vapesyc component. i vapesyc component is the interface we will be using, and it needs to be initialized. On the side near the line numbers. Click on the light bulb and click on Implement Interface. Once you do so, there are many methods that will show up. In this video, we're only going to be focusing on select methods to do a very basic example of taking heat load input from a user and produce outputs from this heat load input. Above all the methods, we have to declare needed variables for the user to enter in values. For this example, only one variable is going to be declared, and I'm going to call it mHeatLoad. It is casted as a double in order to accept decimal inputs. You can declare as many variables as you need before all the methods the same way. This variable serves as storage for when users open the Edit Properties tab for the component and input a value specifically for the heat load. Now we're going to go down to the Begin Simulation method. This method is used when you want actions to happen as the dialog box opens. I'm going to leave this as is to focus more on other methods. I'm also going to leave the end simulation method here as is for the same reason, but here you can place actions that you want to happen after the cycle runs, such as automatically clearing or resetting all inputs. The edit properties method will include statements that aid in user interaction and saving input data to the structure. I'm going to paste some code, replacing the throw new not implemented exception line, and then explain it. The first line, as the comment says, will load a form, which is an edit properties window on VapePsych. This means we will need to create a form to be used. To create a form, make sure your project name is selected. So custom component is selected for me, and right click. Then go to Add, Form, Windows Forms, select Form, Windows Forms, and press Add. I already have a form here, but when you create a form, this dialog box will show up, except blank. To add items such as labels, text boxes, and buttons, click on Toolbox on the side. For the labels, click on the label, 
go to the Properties window on the lower right corner and scroll down to Text. You can see here that I typed in Heat Load for it to show up as text. And the same thing was done for the units for watts. For the buttons, I added the typical OK and Cancel buttons again through the Properties window for the text. So here, I have OK as a text, and here I have Cancel as a text. For the text box, I changed the name in the properties to be called Text Heat Load, and this is going to be referenced since users will be directly typing their values into this text box. Each form also has their own code. Double-clicking on the image of the window will open up a tab with the code. Initially, you should see Form 1, Form 1 underscore load, text box 1 underscore text changed, two label underscore click methods, and two button underscore click methods. This, of course, will depend on the number and the type of tools you have on your form design. If any of the methods do not show up, go back to the tab with the dialog box and double click on the actual text box or buttons. This should bring you back to the tab with the form code, but with all methods visible. We will have to add other methods, namely set component data and get component data. Here, I already have them included. Set component data takes on the text that is being inputted. Inside this method, there is a data structure called heat load, and this line takes in a double input and converts it into a string. Get component data takes the user's input and converts it into a double. Under the button1 and button2 methods, button1 corresponds to the OK button and button2 corresponds to the cancel button. Under the OK button method, this line called this.dialogResult equals dialogResult.OK is for OK buttons specifically. And the same goes for this line, this.dialogResult equals dialogResult.Cancel for cancel buttons. Now that we have a form, we can go back to the class on tab to the edit properties method. This next line loads data into the form that was just created the data being from M heat load. This line shows a dialog box or the edit properties window. And this last line saves the data from M heat load into the structure. You can see that the get component data method from the code for the form is used here. This Boolean method should return true. The next method we are going to focus on is the initialize component method. Again, I'm going to paste some code in and explain it. This first line, port count equals 2, means that there will be two ports to this component, which are the standard inlet and outlet ports. These next three lines are generally standard, stating a variable for the port states and defining operating modes and boundary conditions. In order to make sure this code is properly executed, we need to go back to the initial lines that we have temporarily ignored. As you can see, we need to use variables port count, port states, operating mode, and boundary condition. When we scroll back up, we see that these four variables have been declared, but have basically been ignored because of the throw new not implementing exception line. All we have to do now is to delete every instance of a throw new not implemented exception for the four needed variables. Now, when we scroll back down, to initialize component, we can see that we can now use these variables. This line sets a value to m heat load so that there is a default number that shows up in the edit properties window when the user opens it. Again, this Boolean method should return true. Now we're going to go down to the run method. 
I'm once again going to paste some code. The first line gets a heat load value from the data structure. Recall, I defined m heat load before all the other methods at the top and set it to 1000.0 in the initialized component method as a default value. If the user enters a different value through the dialog box, this new value will be read by the heat load variable. These next lines have to do with the input for your custom component. Since this component will ultimately be placed in the cycle for testing, the data will come from the previous component. Input conditions are in port states 1. I have here an input pressure, input enthalpy, and input mass flow rate. It is also possible to add variables for inlet temperature and quality, but we will not do so for this example. These two lines below solve for the output conditions. Outlet enthalpy is equal to the heat load divided by the mass flow rate plus inlet enthalpy. And to keep things simple, there will be no change in pressure. These three lines are setting the outlet state, seen here by port states 2. Outlet pressure is set to P out. Outlet enthalpy is set to H out. And again, to simplify things, the inlet and the outlet mass flow rates are the same. This method should say return 0. Babe psych files are saved as an XML, and the save state and load state methods are responsible for this process. In the save state method, I have pasted some code. These first lines in this method are needed all the time. A string dictionary will have to be created with the system.collections.specialized.stringdictionary sd equals new system.collections.specialized.stringdictionary line. Then we can add values to this dictionary with the sd.add lines. In this line, we are adding the value for heat load, which came from the m heat load variable, and converting this into a string. The xn line is a component helper where the get component config header tells vapepsych where to save this information. In this case, it is saving as a heat exchanger. The tn variable is creating an element in a heat exchanger node of the xml document. This node is called switches, and within that node will be all the variables to be stored, such as heat load in this case. UMD CEE dot vapepsych standard dot component helper dot save collection saves the dictionary into the switches node. The XD variable creates a document for the XML file, and the TN variable adds nodes to the XML file. Each child of the TN variable, or basically each value you want to be stored, will be added to the heat exchanger component through the xn.appendChild tn line. This method ultimately returns the xn variable so that the xml file can be built and included. The loadState method is similar, but it is getting the xml of the cycle instead of building it. A string dictionary is loaded, which was defined in the saveState method. Now, you are getting the values of the XML node, which in our case is the variable heat load, converting it into a double and loading it into the M heat load variable. This Boolean method should return true. If you have any questions or desire more information about creating custom components on VapePsych, visit the VapePsych help file or contact us at support at optimizedthermalsystems.com.